Hi guys, today's video is going to be an update on the Alexis Pantino case. I do want to apologize. I believe in my first video I mispronounced um, Alexis's last name. It is not uh, Vila, it is actually Pantino. So I'm really sorry, I apologize about that. If you haven't seen my first video on this case, I will leave it linked on the screen right here. Definitely make sure you go and check it out. Watch that video first before you watch this because you'll be a little bit confused and you won't know what I'm talking about. Today's video is going to be relatively short because not much has changed. It is still a cold case investigation. There are a few things that I can update you guys on, so I thought, why not? The first thing I wanted to talk about was the suspects in the case, and um, obviously the main suspect in the case, in this case, is the boyfriend. Well, not to the police, but allegedly. The boyfriend did take a lie detector test that he did not pass. The results actually came back inconclusive. Because lie detector tests are circumstantial evidence, it would take a lot more circumstantial evidence other than just the lie detector test to be able to press any charges or bring anyone into court. Also, because lie detector tests can be faked, it doesn't mean that everything that he said during the lie detector test was a lie. It just means that somewhere throughout that lie detector test that he took, he was being untruthful. The coroners listed Alexa's death as undetermined, despite her autopsy showing at least nine different bruises, scrapes, and abrasions. She had two lacerations on her chin and two above her eyebrows. I just have one question for investigators where do you think those bruises came from do you think that alexis knocked herself around before she decided to commit suicide does that make sense it doesn't that makes no sense and that changes for me that changes the game and i feel like that should have changed the game for um, police as well they should have looked more into that. Since I shot this video, other YouTubers, like bigger YouTubers like Kendall Ray, has also uh, made videos on this case, which is super exciting. Hopefully it brings more awareness to the case. She had great interviews with the family members as well. If you guys wanna check out her video, I will leave a link in the description below. But I wanted to talk about that situation for a little bit because a weird thing happened to her. Shortly after posting her video, um, it's, allegedly the boyfriend actually went on to Kendall Ray's page and left a comment defending himself and allegedly he went to her channel under his own name he also filed a privacy complaint against her on YouTube requesting YouTube to remove her video don't come for me don't come for me now I say allegedly because I don't know if this is true I don't have any actual evidence I could not find it on Kendall's page but um this is all alleged i think it's absolutely just like crazy that he would go onto kendall's page to try if he did do that to try and defend himself when he couldn't even show up to alexis's funeral wouldn't that have been a better defense if you'd actually showed up to your dead girlfriend's funeral instead of starting a new relationship just a few months after wouldn't that make sense you guys know I say it all the time in every video but I'm gonna say it again in this video we see it every single time whenever the significant other has any faults in what happens to the victim they always have this disassociation with what went on they have this disconnect with the victim themselves. And like I said, everybody mourns in their own way, but this just doesn't seem like mourning to me at all. I'm not saying he's guilty, but he's displaying all of the signs of someone who is guilty of this. I really hope police will reinvestigate this case because it is just astounding. I do feel like there is enough circumstantial evidence here for them to really investigate the boyfriend a little bit more. That's my opinion. Alexis's family has started a petition to bring awareness to investigators to reopen the case. If you guys would like to sign that petition and be a part of helping solve Alexis's murder, I'm gonna say murder, I know a lot of people might not agree with me and I might get some hate in the comments. It is a homicide or murder but definitely not a suicide. I'll leave a link down below in the description box to the petition for you guys if you'd like to sign it. For this to be murder, it would have to be preconceived, so planned beforehand. And um, 
I just don't, I don't have any evidence, any solid evidence that this was actually planned beforehand. We don't have any of that evidence in front of us. But from the circumstantial evidence, there's a lot of, there's that huge gap of time. You know, that's the thing that really bothers me about this is that there's that huge gap of time that is unaccounted for that he was there at the apartment building and claims that he slept in his car and she was inside of the apartment supposedly already committed suicide and dead. It's just, that's the one thing that I really can't get over. I feel like this case has haunted me from the beginning, from, from the moment that I saw Mariah's video, this case has always stuck with me and been on my mind. And that huge gap of time, I can't get over. There's a lot of other things that could have come into play. Maybe Alexis was talking with somebody else that we don't know. It could have been someone else involved. I don't know. We don't know. That information is not given to us. That information is not showing up. There is no circumstantial evidence there. But what we do know is that her and her boyfriend got into a fight that night and that it was really, really bad. So bad that he stormed off in the bar and left her there alone by herself for the rest of the night. And she was trying to get in contact with him and call him and call him before he got home. And he would not answer the phone. And even when she got home, he still wasn't there. Is it a possibility, you guys, that they were so, it's such a horrible fight and he was so upset with her for looking at another guy, talking to another guy at the bar, whatever, that set him off, whatever set him off, he was so upset about it that he got into an altercation with her and maybe it got physical, okay? And maybe that's when that happened. Or maybe he got so angry when he got home, she probably had locked the door and dead bolted it so he couldn't get in. So maybe she would not let him into the apartment. So he decided to break in through the window, climb in. You know, I really don't even think that. Like after reviewing a lot of this evidence, I really think that whoever did this to her, she knew them. She knew them very well, well enough to let them into the apartment that late at night. I believe, and I know that the, that the door was locked from the inside, but I believe that whoever did this, Alexis let them in or somehow they had access to get in. They did get inside the, the apartment. They were in there speaking with her. Maybe they got into an altercation and it led to to Alexis's death sadly. After that, the person probably didn't know what to do and the only thing they could think of was to pin it as a suicide or to just get out of there. So what they tried to do was set up the scene to make it look like Alexis committed a suicide or there was no way anybody could get in and by doing that they locked the door from the inside and then just climbed back out of the window. I think the mistake that whoever was involved in this made was actually leaving the knife near the body and not leaving it actually still in the body and not placing the, the hand around the knife. I think that that, not that I'm trying to encourage anybody or give pointers on how to set up and get away with murdering someone or a crime, that is not what I'm trying to do. But I do think that whoever did this was stupid enough to actually leave the knife on the floor near her body and not in her hand, not still stuck in her chest. That right there, just that forensic evidence right there is enough circumstantial evidence to show that someone else was there with her other than herself. Someone else was obviously there with her. She was not alone. If you guys would like to hear more, you can definitely check out that other video. I'm not going to go too in-depth into the case because I've already done a whole video on it. So that is the brief update on this case. Hopefully we can all come together, get this petition signed, get enough names on the petition to get this um, case reopened and investigated. Somebody has to give a voice to these victims and I feel so many times that the police fail them that I just can't help but express that. So I also want to say a huge thank you to Alexis's family. Thank you so much for to Mariah and her cousins and the family for leaving those 
very very nice comments on my video I really appreciate it and I'm just glad that my video actually it made you guys proud and you weren't upset or mad about it we're all here for the same reason to get justice for Alexis I'm glad to help in any way that I can um, so if you guys are watching this again and you um, would like anything added to this video if you get any new information please let me know I will leave my Instagram in the description below for you guys if you have any more information or if anyone out there has any more information about this case or knows anything and would like to come forward and show and share what they know you can leave a comment on this video or you can DM me on Instagram somebody out there knows something what are some of your theories and opinions on this case please let me know in the comments down below if you like videos like these then check out my last episode I will leave it linked on the screen right here and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my future episodes. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!